Bioshock Infinite has a standout, iconic NPC. It's him, the bread boy. The bread boy appears in Bioshock Infinite's Burial at Sea DLC in an over-the-top Parisian dream sequence. The boy was also the subject of a recent viral tweet, where the tweeter poked a bit of fun at what they saw as a ham-fisted way to tell players, Hey, hey, you're in Paris. Bienvenue à Paris. But the reasons the bread boy exists, why he dances, why he holds the baguette, tell a broader story about how games are made and the very strange, very specific challenges that developers face. It's a little boy in Paris dancing with a baguette around a cylinder. People love him. That's why I reached out to the maker of The Bread Boy to get the inside story. I'm Gwen Frey. I'm a game developer. I've been making games for about, oh shoot, like 13, 14 years now. Gwen is the founder of Chump Squad, an indie studio that's currently working on a puzzle game called Lab Rat. But back in 2011, she was at Irrational Games, working as an animator on Bioshock Infinite and its DLC. In Burial at Sea, the player controls Elizabeth, a character that we know longs to go to Paris. She enjoys a croissant at a cafe. Everyone knows her name, and they say, Bonjour, Mademoiselle Elisabeth. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonjour, mon ami. And it becomes increasingly absurd until, like, a bird lands on her finger and starts just chirping La Vie en Rose. And we realize this is all just a dream. A dream that turns dark, like everything else in Elizabeth's life. It sets the tone for the rest of Braille at Sea and tugs at the player's heartstrings. So this was a scene we had to put together pretty quickly. It's an important scene because it's the first one in the game. So you want to put some resources into it, but you can't put all your resources into a scene that's only going to be four minutes. You know what I mean? One of Gwen's tasks was placing background characters, like the painters capturing the Seine, the couples enjoying aperitif. I thought it looked really good, but I thought it was pretty static. And I think the later on I talked to some of the level builders and they agreed, like there just wasn't enough motion in the scene. But the characters are stationary for a reason. They're chumps. Chumps was something that we developed when I got there. And, and a chump is just a skeletal mesh that just plays a looping animation. Chumps is what the irrational developers nicknamed this particular kind of NPC. But you can find them in basically any game. Chumps have no virtual brain, no pathfinding. The chumps here have head and eye tracking scripts that Gwen created so that they respond to Elizabeth's presence and fire off voice lines when she's close enough. That's it. When I was hired, I was like, what am I doing here? And they're like, we need a new system for this. And so I became the person that owned the chumps. And then named her own studio Chump Squad. Chumps stand in contrast to NPCs that have AI, characters that have their own pathfinding and use way more computational power. Certain NPCs need AI, like enemies that are seeking the player, shooting, taking cover. Elizabeth, in the original Bioshock Infinite where she was an NPC, also had AI. She had intelligent behaviors, like throwing the player ammo. Basically, as soon as I got there, um, we discovered that we could have far fewer AI on screen than we believed. When we looked at the specs for like the, the consoles, there, we didn't really have a, a civilian NPC that was really light. And so, we ended up in a situation where we could only have seven NPCs spawned at any time, regardless if you could see them or not. So we needed a way to have background characters. Hence the need for chumps, NPCs that were really light. Chumps could fill out Bioshock Infinite's levels without blowing up everyone's PS3s or Irrational's budget. And you can have way more than seven people on screen if all they're doing is swaying quietly with their hands clasped in prayer. Putting an AI in Paris would certainly make it less static, but Gwen just didn't have that option. And she couldn't just pick out a random chump and bless it with the powers of ambulation. You, you can't have a looping animation of a chump running in the street because the player could walk through that, right? It, say, say I just made a skeletal mesh and it was just running, right? I could put collision on that so you couldn't run through it, but then what? Then I'd have to like script up something for if it hits you, it would stop. Um, and at some point this just becomes so ridiculous, it becomes AI itself. This NPC couldn't have AI and it couldn't just go frolicking down the street. It had to have a space to go about its business blissfully uninterrupted by the player bumbling into its path. I saw this cylinder and I figured I'd have somebody running around the cylinder because I could expand out the collision for the cylinder and that would keep you from running it through them in any way. Gwen landed on the idea of a dancing couple. It would be low lift because there were already dancing chumps in Bioshock Infinite that Gwen had scripted herself. In this scene, they dance until the player gets close and then transition into an applause animation. I remember this animation because it was a real pain in the butt to set up that, that whole scene. 
So I thought, okay, there'll just be a couple dancing around and it'll probably be kids or something like that because it would be silly if it was just two adults dancing around. That's like too absurd too fast. But dancing animation that looked all right on an adult character rig looked a little underbaked on two kids. Let me say something really obvious for a second. Adults and kids are different sizes. Animations can be copied and pasted from one character model to another. The game engine knows where the character's limbs should be based on the original model's measurements. But those proportional measurements are different on a tiny child body, so shit gets weird. It's kind of cute, I guess, but their their hands are going through each other. It looks super broken. Their legs are going through the ground because, like I said, they the proportions weren't the same as the adults. Gwen tried to solve the foot problem with inverse kinematics, a system that helps the game engine calculate more accurately where bones should be in relation to each other. This helped the character's feet stay flat on the ground, where Parisians' feet traditionally are. But when she did this, the kids were stuck with their hands above their heads because the hand height that the engine understood as correct was where the adult character's hands would be. So I, I deleted the boy's dancing partner and I put a baguette in his hands instead. And now what you have is a boy dancing around with a baguette in his hand. Bread's ready. You have to keep in mind, we're talking about the bread boy and that exploded on the internet, but that whole process of like coming up with that, making the bread boy and putting him in game was like 30 minutes, maybe. It, it just wasn't that big of a deal. But it became a big deal because the internet loves a bread boy. Even before he got a rise out of Twitter in February 2022, the bread boy was the ideal niche cosplay, and he's been the subject of appreciation threads on Reddit. Most people think he's pretty goofy, but there's an amusement and affection for that goofiness. The biggest thing for me is just always games have the capacity to reach people, you know, to touch them on an emotion level, to make them sad, to make them happy, to make them laugh. Uh, I, I want to make a game that would make people laugh and that, that, would, that would remind people about this kind of absurd shared experience we're experiencing. And that's kind of where Labrat came from. Labrat, which is due out this year, is a satirical puzzle game that pokes fun at our relationship with technology. Born out of Gwen's early pandemic feelings of absurdity at being trapped indoors and doing silly little tasks on a computer. I am helping. We are doing this together. We, is, we are bonding. This is my baby. I'm working pretty hard on Labrat and I'm really, really excited. And if, if I could make somebody laugh with this, you know, if I could make a game that makes people laugh, that's worth sharing on Twitter, or even if it's not, if it just makes like a couple people laugh, that's, that's it. That's the best feeling. The bread boy is, yes, pretty silly, but he's a reminder that every part of a game has a developer's fingerprint on it. And the weirdest details can lead to an interesting story. This iconic, indelible little meme boy exists because of a combination of technical limitations, the need to create a more dynamic scene, and a creative solution to the problem. All done in about the time it takes to cook a baguette. Should I do the wink as part of that or after that? Wink. Uh, I'd say during. Need. Need. Need? Which of my eyes is better at winking? Uh, I'd say the one with the higher eyebrows. What was it like for you to see that? 